Don't get it twisted. POSIX compliant shell and bash are not the same thing. A lot of people will ask me to do more bash scripting tutorials, but the fact is I actually don't really write bash scripts. Uh, I very rarely do. When I write scripts, I nearly always make them narrowly sh narrow shell scripts. And bash is technically something a little different. So to be clear, here I am running bash, if you can echo zero and see whatever you're running in your command line. Um, but uh, And of course, most commands you run, if I'm just running echo commands or something like that, they're going to be the same whether you're running in the classical Unix shell or in bash. But there are differences. They are very important. And if you want to write scripts that run fast and are portable, I recommend against using bash for most cases. Now, to be clear, I, you know, if you go to my GitHub, I'll have dozens of scripts. Nearly all of them are POSIX compliant shell scripts. There are a couple bash scripts I have. So I want to explain, you know, why I want to show you some of the, the the cool things that bash can do that separate it from other scripts, but I importantly want you to be aware that there is a difference and it is important to know that difference. Okay, so um, for most things, as I said, you know, most basic commands are going to be the same in POSIX compliant shell and bash. Um, but there are a couple things that are different. Let me give you some examples. So one, uh, I'm going to run the command pacman q. This, of course, is an Arch Linux command, or uh, but it lists out all of the programs I have installed on my computer. Okay, so I can take this as an example. Let's uh, output that to a file progs1. In fact, I'll take that file progs1 and I'm going to copy it to progs2. Now I'm going to open up that second file, and I'm just going to delete a couple lines. You know, not not too many. Just I'll just delete a couple lines. Now um, I do this because uh, you may know you can run this command diff on two different files. I'm going to give it progs1 and progs2, uh, and diff will print out all the lines that are different. Okay, so in this case, it's showing us that you know these red lines with the uh, you know the the uh, greater than or less than sign. Um, these are all uh, present in the first file, but not the second. Okay, so this, of course, is exactly the same. I mean, diff is the same on any kind of uh, you know in any kind of circumstance. Uh, you can run this command in POSIX, POSIX compliant shell and bash. It's not the commands that are different; it's the syntax that's different. And one nice thing about bash that is not present in POSIX compliant shell is, let's say I delete progs one. Okay. Now, as we said a second ago, progs1 is really just the output of pacman q. Okay? So one thing we can do is instead of saying progs1 here, since we deleted that file, we can actually say pacman q and put it in um, parentheses with you know, the less than sign before. Now, this is called process substitution. And process substitution is a bashism. Okay? Now, if I run this, you'll see that it looks basically the same as when we had an independent file. And what it's doing in this circumstance is that it's comparing not two files, but a file with the output of a command. Okay? It's checking to see what's different about them. Um, or, you know, we could com compare two different commands as well. So I could say something like pacman, um, you know, qn, which lists all the uh, re uh, local packages. So now it's going to list out all the remote pack or the AUR packages, okay? So we can run that just as well. Um, either way, this is, pro again, this is process substitution, and this is a bashism. So why is this important? Now, first off, there are some shells which will deliberately try not to have bashism. They'll try to be narrowly POSIX compliant. And inc mksh is one of them. So if we run the same command, if we run diff um, and then pacman q, compare that with uh, pacman q in, okay, if we run that, it's going to give us an error, syntax error, unexpected uh, parenthesis. Uh, actually, let me make that a little bigger. This is because mksh is not doesn't have bashisms. It tries to be narrowly POSIX compliant. Now, why is this important? So the thing to remember is that uh, Bash is very nice as an interactive shell. It has all these cool features. Um, you know, you can have a Bash RC and all these Bash profile files and stuff like that, and all these this stuff all over the place. Now, MKSH can have some of those things, but Bash also has this additional syntax. Um, and Bash runs very slowly. It is one of the slowest shells out there. Again, it's nearly default on every machine, but in terms of actually running scripts, it's very slow. Okay, so if you run this command, you can run this on your on your machine right now. LSL bin sh. Okay, 
Now, depending on, this will be different for different distributions, but if you actually go to your binsh file, you'll find that there is not a, actually a file called binsh. It actually is just a link that links to another program. On my machine, I have it linked to dash. Dash, like mksh, is a narrowly POSIX compliant shell. And the reason I have this is because if I link binsh to dash, things are gonna run much faster. Uh, all the scripts that are POSIX compliant shell scripts, they're gonna run much, much faster uh, with Dash than they would with Bash. But um, on Arch Linux by default, uh, binsh links to Bash. So whenever Arch Linux finds a shell script that is not marked for Bash, but I mean, it is gonna run Bash scripts as Bash scripts, but it's also gonna run shell scripts as Bash, bash scripts, because when you find binsh, it's gonna be linked to Bash by default on Arch. So that means, you know, if you have a system that's running a whole bunch of shell scripts in the background or daemons or something like that, um, you're going to have a little more, you know, running bash things are going to be a little slower, a little less snappy, probably not even noticeable, but, you know, all that kind of stuff can add up. So it's usually a good habit. Dash, of course, you have to install. I don't think it comes default. I think it is actually default on um, like Ubuntu or Debian or something like that. Um, but on Arch Linux, you'd have to install it and then link binsh to it. It says it on the Arch Wiki if you want to know how to do it. Um, so just to be so, it's usually a good practice if you want a, a system that runs as fast as you it can go. I guess it's usually a good habit to link your uh, shell to something that's POSIX compliant rather than Bash. Now that causes some com complications for people who don't know any better. I guess. Um, now let me go to my scripts folder. Um, if I just go around in here, let me just open up some random scripts here. You will actually see that most of them are marked for bin sh. In fact, the only two I have, this script here, cable, um, and there's another one called shortcuts. Uh, I think that's in the tools directory, but pretty much everything else is in bin sh. I deliberately try not to use bashisms in any circumstance in my scripts. So when, um, you know, so I'll mark them all as just being shell scripts, and this will tell your system to run, run them as whatever your bin sh is, which again in my case is dash. So why this can cause problem? A lot of times I will see, I guess, more novice users. They have just seen people use bin sh all the time, and they will write a bash script with a bunch of bashisms in it. You know, they might include something like you know diff. Uh, Pacman Q, um, and then you know file. And if they include that in this file, it will break if you have linked your shell to Dash, which again many distributions do by default, and many people will do anyway. Okay, so do not be, be sure you know what is a Bashism and what isn't. Okay, so uh, I'll give you a couple other examples, and then I'll show you a program that does it automatically. Just you know, um, one thing that actually sort of annoys. So one thing. Uh, if you want to compare, let's say I want to compare my browser, uh, see what that is. You know, if my browser is equal to Firefox, okay, um, then echo, you know, it's Firefox, okay. So um, you'll see that nothing ran because my browser is not actually Firefox. I think my browser right now is Surf, okay. So, okay, well, it's Surf. I forgot to rename it, but. Uh, so this is how you compute whether something is equal to uh, another thing in POSIX compliant shell. But a lot of Bash users will want to do this thing where there are, you know, are two brackets and two equal signs, which technically is something different in Bash that enables like glob matching and stuff. If you want to do glob matching in POSIX shell, you the easiest way to do it is actually with a case statement. Um, but there are a bunch of features which, again, this might be nice. Um, because I think you could, you know, have some kind of regular expression here in Bash, um, but you can't do exactly the same in POSIX compliant shell. Okay. Um, now, most things that Bash adds, I think, are just minor things like that can, that can easily be done in, uh, you know, re you can just rewrite it in typical shell and it's not a big problem. Uh, but there are a couple of things. Let me actually show you. Um, one, uh, I've talked about this script before on my channel, but it's one of my only other bash scripts. And this uses enormous amounts of process substitution and stuff like that. I actually output, um, I output the output of t to an awk command and that goes to, you know, multiple different places. Um, and this is one of those circumstances where the 
innovations of Bass are just such that I really just want to use it. I, I, you know, writing this kind of stuff in POSIX compliant shell would be a big pain. Um, but anyway, so I just wanted to, hopefully this, this sort of clarifies things, but uh, to be clear, if you, if you want some takeaways from this, I recommend, uh, I recommend setting your, your SH to uh, dash or something like that or some other POSIX compliant shell. It will make things run a little bit more snappy, a little less overhead. And whenever you write scripts, just be mindful whether they're bash or not bash. Actually, I should show you how to tell the difference if you don't know the difference. Um, so um, there is a program that I have installed called ShellCheck. Okay, and I'll, uh, let me actually go to um, this directory. So again, this file I have open over here, shortcuts. So I can run shell check on shortcuts and nothing's going to pop up because there's no problem. Shell check actually checks for a lot of things. Um, it'll check for like bad syntax or errors or non-recommended syntax. But let's say I change this to just an sh file and I run shell check on that. It's going to give me all these different errors because it detects, okay, well, he wanted a POSIX compliant shell script, but he has all of these different bashisms here. So it will actually print out all the errors. And shell check is really nice if you don't have a good sense of what is a bashism and what isn't. So uh, I recommend using that. I, I actually use it a lot. And uh, again, it does more than just checking to see if it's you know POSIX compliant. Um, it checks for other errors as well. So sometimes I'll run stuff through shell check. Um, but anyway, so that, I think that's about it for this video. I'll just, um, I, again, I recommend, just know the difference between bashisms and, you know, normal shell, and you'll probably be fine. Actually, before I forget, I'm going to put bash back in there because I'm going to quit the video and then forget about it. Anyway, that's about it, and I will see you guys next time.